Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Welcome to Daily Programmer episode two, where we're gonna be solving find the minimum value in an array of numbers. So I classify this as a beginner problem because if you know uh, how to do loops, you know how to do array access, and you know how to compare numbers, you can solve this problem. Uh, and the problem says, given an array of numbers, return the minimum value in the array. And I'll note, you should try solving this without math.min first. For example, if we have a function called findMin that takes an array that has one, two, and three, we need to return one because that's the smallest value in the array. Uh, again, if we have findMin with all of these numbers, we need to return negative 100 because that is the smallest number. And if we have an array that has all negative numbers, we need to return the smallest negative number in this case, which is negative three. Here we go. Uh, so. I will solve this first with pseudocode, that is just explain it in human words how I'd solve it. Like, again, like if, if I'm, I'm a person that looks at, at this list, let's say I'm not even a programmer, and I see the numbers one, two, and three on a piece of paper, how can I tell which one is the minimum? In my head, I've just compared them all, right? Like I start at one and I'm like, uh, that's the minimum I've seen so far. I look at two, well, one's still the minimum. I look at three, one's still the minimum. All right, one is now the minimum. Now, and same thing, if I was doing this in my head, I'd be like, okay, negative 10, definitely the minimum. That's still smaller, so negative, still negative 10, still negative 10, still negative 10, still negative 10. Oh, there's a negative 100. That's the, that's the, the lowest, the minimum, and then I'm done. So if you think about like, how do I take that thought process and turn it into code, that's what I'm gonna do now. So what I need is a place to store the minimum. And I'm actually going to initialize this to the first value in the array. So we'll say uh, initialized to the first value in the array. Because again, if we're, if we're doing it the same way I'm doing it in my head, I, it's, it's at this point that the, those are the first ones that I've seen, right? And then after I look at the first one, then I start looking at the others. So in my mind to solve this, we're gonna have a, a variable that has the minimum value, which is the first one in the array. And then we're going to iterate from the second value to the end of the array. So iterate from the second value to the end of the array. So because we already looked at the first and we're already assuming that that's the lowest one we're ever gonna see, then we start looking at every other value after that. Uh, and then it's just a simple comparison. So if the current value is less than the current minimum, set the current minimum to the current value. And I'll, instead of current minimum, we'll just say minimum. So if the current value we're looking at is less than the minimum, set it. Otherwise, do nothing. So in the case of where we're looking at this list, if I look at negative 10, I stored that as my first uh, my minimum value to begin with. And then I start iterating from here. And then I say, is 42 less than negative 10? It's not. Keep going, keep going, keep going, all the way till we get here. It is. And then I would set the minimum to negative 100 in that case. At this point, after I've done my iteration, I can just return the minimum. The minimum. Return the minimum. Cool. So this is how I'm going to solve it. Let's actually turn this into code. So a place to store the minimum initialized to the first value in the array. So here I'm just going to have a value called minimum, and this is going to be numbers at zero. So that's going to give me the first value in the array. Then I need a loop that goes from the second index to the end. So this is just going to be a for loop. We start i off at one because it's zero based index. So instead of starting at zero, because we already handled that, we started at one. We then go, well, i is less than numbers.length. And so uh, that will go all the way until uh, the end. So in this case, the length is three, but I wanna stop at index two because it's zero, one, two. So when i is three, that is not less than three, it's equal. So we break out of there. So that's, that's the, the condition that I want. And then on each iteration, I'm gonna increment i by one. Now, uh, here comes our logic. If the current value is less than the minimum, set the minimum to the current value. So if numbers at i, so that's the current value, if that is less than the minimum, the one that we already are, we know is the minimum, overwrite it. So now minimum is numbers at i. Okay, so that's gonna go through each, every single number, and then anytime it's lower than the minimum, minimum we're overwriting the minimum, so that way the next number we see, um, 
if it's smaller than the minimum, it overwrites it. And finally, we can just return the minimum. So here we go, return minimum. Awesome. I'm going to start up Quaka, which runs the code inside my editor, and we can see how well I did. So here, this returned one. Here, this returned negative 100. And here, this returned negative three. So I've done it right. Awesome. Let's let's look at a few other ways how you might do this. Um, now, a lot of people actually don't reach for this. So the fact that I put the first number in the array into minimum, a lot of people actually won't do this. And I'll show you what they do instead. And this is a completely valid solution. But I don't like it as much because it uses negative infinity, specifically for finding the minimum. So what, what people will do instead is they'll, they'll initialize minimum to be a negative infinity. So uh, infinity is a value built into JavaScript, and you can do negative infinity. And so basically, we are assuming minimum is the smallest number uh, we have never seen. Actually, no, we, we do, it, do it in the opposite direction. Assume minimum is the biggest number we've ever seen. Assume minimum is infinity. Because as I look at each number, it's going to be less than infinity because infinity is like the biggest number. Um, but now I can just start my loop at zero and then compare every number from there. This should give us the same result, but all we've done is initialize this to infinity because we know all of these numbers are going to be uh, less than infinity. Uh, for the most part, it's possible that somebody might pass in infinity. And if that's the case, then I would actually uh, use this solution. Uh, but you do see people solve it in this way as well. Cool. Uh, now, let me show you the, uh, the math.min version of this. And, and this requires a little more knowledge of, of like function invocation and spreading and the spread operator. It's a little bit trickier, but you will see people implement it this way. So let's look at it. So math.min is built into JavaScript, but it just accepts a list of numbers. So if I pass in one, two, and three, it's gonna return one, right? If I pass in all of these values, it's gonna return negative 100. If I pass in all of these values, it's going to return negative three, right? But how do I do that dynamically, right? Because if I just pass in the numbers array, it's going to complain. It's like, I don't want an array. I want you to pass in each individual number. So right, let me pass in numbers. This just gives me back nan. So how do I take an array and pass each value into math.min? You spread it. So by using this spread operator, that basically takes every value in the array, and then it's like calling math.min with each individual value from the array. Um, before the spread operator exists, we also had a way of doing this, which was, is it apply or is it a bind? I think it's apply. So math.min, we want to apply uh, to the null and then the numbers array like that yeah that's that's the way to do it um is numbers oh because i spelled numbers wrong like that there we go and so this this solves it in the same way but basically this spread operator is a nicer way of writing this okay um i, I think again like you could use math.min instead of um uh, the 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 less than comparison here so let's actually solve it that way as well um just to show you kind of really what would be happening internally to math.main when you pass in a bunch of values. So if I were to do this, and instead of doing this comparison, so if the value is less than that, reassign it, this could just be a one-liner that says minimum is equal to math.min of the current minimum and the current number, like this. And this, this should solve it in the same way, but this is kind of what's happening internally when you pass all of those numbers, because it needs to compare each one to every other one. Um, but this gives us the same result. So one, negative 100, negative three. But basically, we're just reassigning minimum to be the minimum between the current minimum and the current value itself. So this is how uh, I would find the minimum value in an array of numbers. Um, and again, I would argue you should be able to do this without math.min. And I would argue that I actually, I like this solution that doesn't use infinity. You're, you're open to use whichever one, but I like this solution. Um, now I'm gonna open the Twitch chat. If anyone in the Twitch chat has uh, a solution that they did that they'd like to share, I'll pull it up on screen. And also, if you have any issue or questions about the solutions that I've written so far, let me know. So let's see. Here I come, Twitch chat. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> okay. Oh, do it with a reduce. 
this this would be good to do. Yeah. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna re. So this is again, if if you saw last episode, people send me really hard to read solutions. <laughs> um, we'll solve it with reduce, but we'll make it we'll make it a bit more readable. But um, basically, we're reducing an array of numbers into a single value, which is the minimum. So we'll definitely do that. Thank you for your solution, Mark Boots. All right, let's see what Zyrus has. Um, yeah, so they, they initialized it to infinity. And yeah, and so this is another thing that, I mean, honestly, maybe it's because I'm, I'm an older JavaScript developer. I never got used to using for of or for in. I almost always use regular for loops. Uh, but JavaScript does have this kind of for loop called an for of loop. And it basically just instantly gives you access to every value in that array. And in this case, it's always going to iterate from the zeroth index to the end. So you do need a situation where you're using infinity because basically for of is like the same thing as this, but basically you just have a variable called value that is number or is the array numbers at that index. Um, so this is pretty nice. It actually reads really nicely, but for whatever reason, I always forget to use this <laughs> versus versus a regular for loop. I would argue, though, that you should know how to do a regular for loop because you're going to come across those, but good call. Uh, and then, yeah, the same, same logic applies. And then they also did it with the reduce. We'll show that compare, the, that that is that solution as well. All right, code brains, what do you got for me? All right, uh, if the array is undefined, just return nan. I like that. So yeah, I think another thing about a lot of these solutions we've created is we're not doing any sort of error checking. We are assuming that we're always going to get an array of numbers. In the real world, you might not. So uh, you could you could guard against that. But for our solutions, we're assuming we're always going to get an array of numbers. Um, yeah, uh, this is another good solution. I didn't think about this. So instead of using infinity, you can use number.max value. So this will give you the maximum possible uh, integer or yeah, I think maximum possible integer uh, in JavaScript. And you, you use that as a replacement for infinity. Um, and then they used a, a for of loop in a similar way. Very good, very good. All right, I'm only gonna click just links, only just links. Use for of, yeah. Uh, without infinity, just init to the first value of the array and start the index at one. Yeah, and that's, that's my first solution. This is my preferred solution is to do it that way. Is max safe integer the same? I don't know, and I'm not even going to look it up, but you can look it up. So if there's max value and max safe integer, there might be some slight differences there. Uh, sort, oh, yeah, okay. So this this is something, a solution that I didn't do, but yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Hushu and whoever suggested it before. Let's actually show that, because it's possible, instead of doing this iteration here, sort the array, and then just return the first value in that sorted array, because after it's sorted, you know that it's like from least to greatest or greatest to least. That's actually another, uh, definitely another solution we could do. So I have a function find min. It takes in the numbers, and uh, we can say uh, numbers dot sort. Now, uh, if we if we look at this and we look at our our example here. <laughs> If we do the default sort, it breaks for negative numbers. So negative 100 is actually less than negative 10, but you can see by just using sort by itself, it didn't, it didn't work. And that's because it actually under the hood only sorts strings by default. And technically the Unicode string negative 10 is less than negative 100. All of that to say, you need to actually pass in a comparison function of A and B. Uh, the, the shorthand way to write this is A minus B. And then that will do the sort in the right way, where negative 100 is the least one there. Um, but really what's happening here is um, if A is less than B, then A should come before B in the sort order. So we return negative 1. Uh, if A is greater than B, it should come after B in the sort order. So we return 1. If they were equal to each other, we return 0. And so that gives us the same result. But Basically, if we just return a minus b, uh, that's a shorthand for, for this. Like, it won't be negative 1 and 1, but it will be a negative number and a positive number. But basically, sort the array from least to greatest, and then grab the first one. <laughs> so after it's sorted, we know, and then we can just grab the first one. Yeah. Now, I would argue, once you start getting into more complex operations and longer array of numbers, this is not as performant. Now, we haven't really even talked about performance or memory usage in any of the daily programmers yet, 
But it's important to know that sorting is not free. Um, and the, the solutions we have so far just iterate up to the length of the number, uh, up to the length of the array. Easy. A sort operation potentially has to compare one every value to every other value. So that's going to be more than a single iteration. So that is that is something to, to think about as well. Um, so sort the array, grab the, the, the smallest one. The, the other option would be sort, and this sorts the array from least to greatest. So if we also sort the array from greatest to least, and to do greatest to least, we just swap this. Now, instead of uh, grabbing the first one in the array, we want to grab it at the end. So we could use this JavaScript method uh, at negative one. And then, so we sorted least to greatest, grab the one on the end, um, and I messed that up <laughs> like that. And then we get, then we get the right answer. Uh, there's a recursive solution. Um, I think it probably would be similar to like math.min because it, it's uh, recursively calling itself with um, the previous array minus the first value in the array, right? <laughs> um, let's see what uh, Timon has. And I think, I think we'll end it there. It, it is really fun to see all of these solutions, though. Oh, yeah, I did say I was going to do it with a reduce. All right, all right, all right. I'll solve it with a reduce, and then we're going to end it there. Uh, but yeah, that also is funny. Is Codebrains is posting the solution. Is this the, uh, is it math.min? Oh, I see. This is the implementation of math min. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're wondering how the Chrome JavaScript, JavaScript engine V8 actually implements math.min, there it is. There it is. There, there's the solution. Okay. So we're going to implement this using a reduce, and then we will, um, we'll, we'll call it there. This has been a good episode so far. Thank you, everybody, for your suggestions and everything else. Now, in order to turn this into a reduce, um, I'm actually just going to rewrite this one as as a reduce um, because reduce can be really hard to wrap your mind around so i always like to start uh once i got used to reduce i just start with reduce but if you're not used to reduce i recommend solve it without reduce first and then turn it into a reduce so basically i have a loop that looks at every number in the array in this case i can say numbers.reduce this is going to give us the accumulator in this case we're accumulating the minimum uh, and then we get each individual value. And we just want to return um, the minimum of the minimum and the current value. Uh, and really, I mean, you could actually, to convert it, you could put this logic inside of the reduce, but we'll do this. So um, instead of numbers at i, we can just use value. So if the current value is less than the minimum, return that value. Otherwise, return the current minimum, like this. Uh, and then we can just return this whole thing, like this. And so what this does is it's going to look at every number in the array. Because we're reducing over an array of numbers, I actually don't need to pass in an initial value to the reduce. You could, though. You could say numbers at 0. And then you could do numbers dot slice one. So basically create a copy of the array without the first value and start the reduce off with the first value. This is going to result in the, in the same thing. But uh, a reduce without an initial value just uses the first value in the array. So it's exactly what we want because we want it to start with either one, negative 10, or one. Um, and then we just have our logic inside. And basically the accumulator is the minimum. The thing we're returning on each iteration of the reduce is what we think the minimum value is. Uh, and then ultimately, we just get the minimum value. So that ends up working out like that. Uh, and again, you saw, you saw my solution using math.min because uh, it would look very similar. So basically, instead of doing the comparison ourselves, we just return math.min of minimum and value like that. And that should return the same answer as well. OK, uh, we definitely got a little bit deeper and a little bit more advanced in this episode, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching. Definitely come watch over on Twitch. I'm live on Twitch right now. Uh, you can. Uh, provide suggestions and also uh, ask questions while I'm solving these types of problems. So we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.